Louisville since then have won every single ACC game, including a sweep up in Chestnut Hill against Boston College. It's going to be Popa against Renfro to start it out here on a series that starts on a Thursday, Easter on Sunday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday baseball series. We're just about ready to get started here. Should be a fun one in Blacksburg as Renfro deals. And we're underway with a strike. Oh, exactly what you're looking for from the right-hander pounding the zone. You see 93 on the gun. Renfro going to go right after these hitters early. Make this struggling pit offense beat them. Big cut and a miss. So Popa hitting 337 to start the year. Now in his 87th at bat, potentially if he goes down or gets on here, fouls it away. I see there no waste pitch at all from Renfro. Good job by Popa to spoil one, stay in the count here, but still behind 0-2, and the right-hander for the Hokies going right after him. Ready to go on the 0-2 and gets his first strike out of the day, so a great way to start out for Renfro, and there's one away here in the top of the first inning. Oh, well, you saw 93, 94, 95 in that first at bat. And again, Renfro not wasting anything. Take a look here and that's the ball right there down the middle of the plate. Popo unable to catch up with it. Really good start for Brett Renfro. So here comes Jaden Melendez. Getting the start at catcher today. First one a bit high from Renfro. Strokes it out to left field, and that one is gone. Over the pitching lab, Jaden Melendez goes yard for the seventh time this season. Uh, you see the catcher coming in, hitting 253, and again, Renfro, I expected him just to attack with fastballs. Again, make, make sure this offense is ready to play. Melendez says, hey, I'm ready, and that one there, like you said, well out of here and clears the pitching lab in left field. Well, we talked to Coach Mike Bell earlier, and the guy that he really wanted to start talking about first is Jaden Melendez coming with that baseball pedigree in his family, and that was a no-doubter teeing off against the freshman. Oof. That's a, that's a way to start out the game, Andrew. Yeah, good start. Again, Renfro gets the first at bat. Melendez gets the best of it there, and... There you see Renfro, the right-hander, right back in the zone. 94 in her half for strike one. So here's Luke Cantwell getting the start at first base. Fouled it away, so quickly 0-2. Cantwell, the transfer portal get from Fairleigh Dickinson. Grew up right outside of Philadelphia. Made the college move over to Western PA. And fouled it back. How about this, Andrew? That home run just traveled 412 feet mm -hmm. off of the bat of Jaden Melendez. Well, we got 330 down the lines, 375 in the gaps, 400 straight away. So that gives you an idea, pulled to the left side, just how far Melendez hit that ball. Well, Renfro takes a moment. A bit high for ball one. Well, the wind is blowing out, but I don't want to take away anything from that home run, Andrew, because I, I don't think that the wind necessarily was the reason why that ball exited the ballpark. Yeah, there you see the flags blowing straight away center, but to your point, that was a ball up in the zone from Brett Renfro, and Jaden Melendez did what he was supposed to with it. That's what I like here, though. You still see a 1-2 count even after giving up the home run. Three-hole, Luke Cantwell at the plate, and Renfro's just not wasting any pitches. Some folks would tell you the Hokies have a pretty good offense, so I don't think that one run's got Renfro too worried. 
And he's attacking these hitters early here in the first. Dribbler on the left side, Grady's there. Two outs. So good time to tell you who's out there defensively. Garrick Ebel back with Virginia Tech after a violation of team rules. Missed a few games and now back in the lineup as a first baseman. There's Clay Grady, the shortstop for the Hokies. Henry Cook getting the start as the battery mate today of the right-hander Renfro. So an underclassman pitcher and catcher. Cook a sophomore, Renfro a true freshman. And he goes up here against C.J. Funk. Uh, we highlighted Funk in the intro coming in, the senior hitting 300 on the year in the four spot, trying to find a way to extend this inning. Renfro trying to get the offense for the Hokies to the plate for the first time. A hitless in his last three games. Before that for C.J. Funk had a nine-game hitting streak, so trying to get off the schneid here against Virginia Tech with two outs and nobody on. That's three straight balls from Renfro. Got Martini hugging the line down third base, no doubles. Middle infield straight up. Renfro trying to get a first strike over here. And there it is on a fastball. There's Martini hugging the line on the right-handed batter. And Demartini, who's played a solid third base for the Hokies this year in his junior season. And back to a full count. So the freshman was down in the count, 3 nothing. Going up against the senior here in Funk at a full count. Yeah, good job by Renfro to come back. I think he thought that was strike three. He was, <laughs> he was walking towards the dugout, but full count instead and payoff pitch coming. Got him. So Renfro fight. Again, doesn't get much easier for Andrade as he works through this lineup. Martin takes ball one. And when we talk with Coach Mike Bell earlier today for Pittsburgh, he made the note that Coach Chef, no matter where he's gone, he's had good offensive teams. And this is a Virginia Tech team that is no exception here in 2024. Fouls it back. This is a team that's already scored over 200 runs on the year. And then many people had picked to be near the bottom of the ACC, and Virginia Tech well, so far has handled its business in those ACC series against Boston College, Notre Dame, as well as Louisville. And Martin starts things off with a shooter into the gap. Healthy round of first. He's going for two. Slides in with a leadoff double. Well, and you talk about the offense and Coach Chef, what he puts there at the plate, but that's another thing this Virginia Tech club does so well. Christian Barton, that ball was hit hard, but we've seen him hit it harder in there. You just see aggressive around first base. No chance that he's holding up, gets the extra bag, takes away the double play ball, and leader on to second base here in scoring position for the Hokies with nobody out. And there is not a moment of hesitation there from Christian Martin at all that he was just going to take a single on that. He was going for extra bases the whole way. And now the shift is on for Carson Martini, Junior with 13 home runs on the season. And he takes a big cut at the first pitch he saw. So the tying run in scoring position for the junior from Virginia Beach. And a perennial starter for Virginia Tech since... The moment he got onto campus back in 2022 was a big part of the reason why the Hokies won the ACC Coastal that year. Oh, I like this battle too. You see Andre go right after him. 95 up in the zone. Carson with a chance to lift one. Flag still blowing out. Andre wins that one. Demartini to behind 0-2. Got a fight now here shorten up. Huge hole in the six hole as the shift is on for the lefty. Yeah, got him looking. Oh, good job by Andre to fight back after that double. Yeah, that's a huge out there for the Panthers and Andre. Take a look at that pitch. Just hangs up in the zone. Bell tie. Looks a little, little elevated there. Maybe why Demartini laid off. Nonetheless, Andre with the big out, and now the 
shift to the other side of second base with Canizero coming to the plate. Plate umpire Craig Barron calling that a strike. And another healthy cut from Canizero. Bucknell transfer for the Hokies, hitting 398 on the year. Another solid beginning to his season. Puts it on the ground. Stab there by Kendro. Not in time, and Christian Martin stays at second base. And it looks like Kurt Elbin, the third base coach for Virginia Tech, isn't necessarily excited that Martin wasn't able to advance on that. That's a tough read there. Ball gets in the hole, still beats the shift with three to the left side. But you see Martin right there looking to continue. Knows he also has to get back. Shortstop might hang on to that and throw behind him. Instead throws across. I think that's where Coach Elbin would like to see Martin advance. Nonetheless, Hokies two aboard, one out. So here's Eddie Micheletti. The transfer from George Washington with a check swing. It's called a strike anyway. Well, Micheletti's been a good bat. Nine home runs on the year. Hitting in the four hole here today. And out of this entire lineup, there's only one batter for Virginia Tech hitting sub 300, and that's the freshman DH and David McCann, who for what it's worth is still hitting 283 with five home runs. And a pretty balanced offensive attack for the Hokies in this lineup, and that is why they're at eight and one in the ACC to begin the year. Christian Martin thought about going, and a bouncing tag made by Kendro. Thought he potentially had him there. Well, we've already touched on the aggressive base running. Great job there by Christian Martin to get a jump. Had a chance to steal that one on Andre. He takes an extra look. Right-hander throws in behind him to keep him close, but that ball almost got away from Kendro and into center field. Would have given a chance for Martin to advance. And the bases are loaded. So Micheletti gets hit by a pitch. And now the tying run is at third with a go-ahead run at second base for Virginia Tech for Henry Cook. And one just gets away from Andrade. Micheletti just light turn, doesn't have to move much. Free bag for him. and. Like you said, base is loaded. Okie's in business here, chasing one, but base is loaded and pretty good bat at the plate. And Henry Cook, who we highlighted at the beginning of this inning, he takes a high pitch there for ball one. Well, just one out on the strikeout looking of Carson Martini. Another check swing, did he hold up? And the first base umpire, John Mary, says yes, he did. It's a good time to tell you the entire crew, John Mary at first, Matthew Schaefer at second base, Jose Ravula at third, and Craig Barron behind the plate. And it already looks like we're gonna get a mound visit here. Yeah, early visit indeed. Coach at Pittsburgh, so this is a bit of strategy for the head coach here. What does he do with Henry Cook at the plate? And it comes back with a strike. Good answer for Andrade coming off the mound visit. Settle in, deliver a fastball. Trying to poke it foul and now at two and two. So big pitch coming for Ryan Andrade here. Yeah, see what Andrade goes to, he sees. Leaning on the fastball, fastball pretty heavy here early, running mid-90s. I've seen a few off speeds. Obviously, that one there, Cook pushes away. Tries to beat him with the 95 there. Cook able to spoil it and see another one here, 2-2. So it's Martin at third, Canizero at second, and Micheletti, who got hit by a pitch, is over at first base. On the ground, tag at second, throw to first. The stretch is there, and it is in time. What a big double play to get the Panther. 5-6-7 due up against Renfro, the freshman pitcher. 
Renfro's got two strikeouts today, but the only blip was that home run. As Bischke takes a cut at the first pitch, skies it into center. Watson under it. Oh, and again, I really like the approach from the right-hander Renfro. Like you said, he's given up the solo home run in the first, but he was attacking before that, came right back and attacked after. And there on first pitch in the second inning, goes right after Bischke in the five spot to get the F8. So here comes Justin Fogel. First pitch to the lefty just misses on a fastball outside. Well, Fogel, another transfer for Pittsburgh. Fouls it away. I'm making the jump up to Division I. He was at Penn State Abington. Yardley, PA native. Digging in right now at 1-1 one and one so far in the year for Fogel hitting 296. Rolls it right to Ebel. Two outs. Well, the right-hander Renfro continues to work. Easy three unassisted there for Ebel. So Jake Kendro ready to dig in. As Kendro, yet another transfer. And he was on a pretty successful Tennessee Vols team last year as a backup shortstop in his freshman year. And as Mike Bell had talked with him earlier and trying to bring a lot of transfers in, you notice a, a good amount of these transfers come from right in western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh specifically. Jake Kendro right from Pittsburgh. There's a lot of Pittsburgh PA natives in the lineup, and we've already seen them here. Tyler Bischke led it off in the second inning. He's actually at his fourth school. And for Kendro, just a second, but bringing a lot of those Pittsburgh guys home, and that was something that Mike Bell, when going into the transfer portal, was, was attractive to some of these guys that were looking for a new home. At least in college, they wanted to be close to their real home where they grew up. I see a good one there from Renfro. Get ahead 1-2. Already two outs here in the top half of the second. See if he wastes one or goes right after him. Popped up, Ebel on a chase. Three up, three down go the Panthers here in the top of the second inning. Hokies trying to tie it up or take the lead when we come back. Bottom of the second. So here's the Division Three transfer, Watson. And a fastball low at the ankles for ball one. Oh, Watson. Just snapped an 18-game hitting streak against Marshall. Hokies had the 4-2 victory up against the Thundering Herd here a few days ago. What an addition to the lineup he's been coming from Division Three Elizabethtown. Well, one and two. Well, Andre, to start off his day, gave up that double to Christian Martin, struck out Martini, and a zero got on with an infield single. And was still able to keep his head strong through there for the Rhode Island transfer after plunking Micheletti, loaded up the bases with one out, and for the Panthers, were able to calm down this pretty offensively pesky team in Virginia Tech. Watson with a bouncer. Cantwell waves off the pitcher. One out. Well, good ready, ready matchup so far. Like you said, Andre battling, gotten a little bit of a jam. Leaned on a shortstop to get him out of it there. Ben Watson trying to get the Hokies going and 
Saw the three unassisted in the top half, and there another three unassisted for Cantwell, and an easy first out for Pittsburgh. So here's Garrick Ebel. 4.05 on the year in 10 starts. Five home runs and eight RBIs. And quickly down 0-2 against Andrade. And lays off there. Pretty good pitch, though. Good miss for Andre there. See if he can get Ebel to chase one out of the zone. Way ahead, 0-2. Look for the right-hander to get back in the zone here. Let his defense work behind him. And it just held up. And Ebel. Not sure if it was a great defensive call to lay off of that, but it ends up being a good take at 2-2. Fastball that didn't miss by much. Full count. Great job by Garrick Ebel to get back in this count. He's behind 0-2. Good waste from Andrade. Righty throws a pretty quality pitch, 1-2, to go 2-2 and then lay off there. Takes the payoff pitch on the right field line, and it will bounce for a base hit. So Garrick Ebel showing how patient he was there and gets on with a single on a 3-2 pitch. Oh, great at bat there from Ebel. Good job to stay with it, push it the other way, not try to do too much with the pitch. And again, you saw the aggressive base running. Ebel with a big turn. Just making sure that no chance to advance. Make sure Funk's paying attention. Right fielder for Pittsburgh does a good job to get it in. But Hokies with one aboard. David McCann wearing number 40 takes a pitch low. So with another hit for Garrig Ebel, this is a Hokies team with really balanced lineup as far as hitting, and we've talked about it before, but you know, John Sheff with those teams, he's had a lot of success with there at Virginia Tech a few years ago and at Maryland and at Maris. They have been offensive teams with a very deep lineup. Trying to do that again here and turn some heads in the ACC for Virginia Tech, who... Like we had talked about earlier, a team that was picked to finish very close to the bottom of the ACC and now is off to its one of its best starts in program history in ACC play. And that's a strike. Yeah, I see a little more off speed from Andre there. McCann unable to hold up on the prior pitch and then another one there that got in under the belt, in under his hands for strike two. So the left-handed hitting McCann. Trying to get something done here with the one-two count. And Chase is there. Second strikeout for Andrade, and now there's two away. Well, and I like Andrade running that one up the ladder. See if he can get McCann to commit, and he does. Goes with the fastball. We talked about velocity in the last inning. And that one there just up in the zone. McCann can't catch up. Pittsburgh here with two outs. Nine hitter for Virginia Tech and Clay Grady, the sophomore shortstop. Well, something that Chef and Coach Elvin have, have really tried to work on is trying to make Virginia Tech a little bit more patient at the plate. And we've seen that here today, not taking hacks at early pitches in the count. Grady there taking a pitch and takes another as Andrade is really pounding the zone. Well, and you like it. We talked about Renfro going right after this Pittsburgh lineup. How about Andrade saying, hey, Hokies, I'm going to give you my best, and he's done that here early. Pitch away from getting out of the second. And Grady just gets a piece of that to stay alive here. Eric Evil on with a single at first.
One and two. And Grady, a two-year starter for Virginia Tech, playing in the middle with Christian Martin. Stays alive. Uh, good job by Grady to extend in a bat. Andrade in a little bit of control right now. Just one base runner for the Hokies, Ebel at first. Two outs with the three unassisted and then the strikeout. Going right after David McCann. But Clay Grady in the nine hole doing what he's supposed to do in that spot. Find a way to get aboard, turn the lineup over with Christian Martin waiting on deck. Did he go? Yes, he did. So on the appeal, John Mary says that Grady went around. It's the third strikeout for Andrade, and back-to-back to, back to end the second inning. Pit uh, he's just not pitching like a freshman is the bottom line. Like Coach Chef said, if he's not one of the best in the country at the moment, he's not sure who is. Brett Renfro is not pitching like a freshman. He's got good stuff. We saw him early here. Good command, good velocity, a lot of confidence. Love everything about the right-hander's delivery, and – Again, blemish back in the first, one pitch, gets up in the zone. Melendez makes him pay, but otherwise the right-hander's been really good for Virginia Tech again today here into the third with one out recorded. Yeah, speaking of freshmen, here is Ryan Zuckerman. A lot of veterans on this pit team, most of them coming from different schools before this, but Zuckerman, a true freshman for the Panthers, and takes a fastball there. Now one and two. And Coach Bell says for Zuckerman, there's a lot of potential. He's just a young player still, going to ride those waves out with him with the, the challenges that go along with somebody playing in their first year. And he's staying alive against Renfro, fouling off that fastball. Well, and an older team here as well for Mike Bell and the Panthers. You talk about Zuckerman in the nine hole, the freshman. Just one sophomore in the lineup otherwise, and Kendro playing shortstop couple of juniors, including Andrade on the hill, but then a lot of seniors for the Panthers. Uh, Renfro gets him to cut and miss at some high change there at 95 miles an hour. So another strikeout for Renfro. That is his third of the day. And it's two outs as we go back to Dom Popa at the top of the lineup. I just elevated fastball. We've seen that a lot early from Andrade and Renfro. Zuckerman, the victim there, unable to catch up. Two quick outs for Virginia Tech. Make it three for Renfro going up against Popa here, who started off the day with a strikeout swinging. Takes the first pitch and bounces it over to Ebel. And it's a quick three up, three down, top of the third. No one left on base with no hits. After Henry Cook in into a double play to end the bottom of the first inning. The base is loaded. That yeah, bounces outside and low. I'll keep an eye on that, too. You see a little off speed there from Andrade. He was heavy with the fastball the first time through the lineup. Again, second look for Virginia Tech as Martin steps in and first pitch off speed. Well, one and one. First of a three-game set between the Hokies and the Panthers. Last year, Panthers got the better of the Hokies up at Cost Field in Oakland, PA. Virginia Tech in that second game against Pittsburgh scored 20 runs, but lost two of the games six to five. Christian Martin tries to get things started off well here in the bottom of the third against Andrade. Like that one hit off the end of the bat. Could be trouble, and instead it's a long run for Popa, who tracks that ball down for out number one. That's a good read there by the center fielder. Had to come a long way, and still a little bit of sun left back here behind the press box to shield as well. Good job for Pittsburgh center fielder there as you see him returning to his position, track down out number one. So here's Carson Demartini, who went down looking his last time up. 
And Andrade, I don't think he's thrown a ball to Martini yet. It was three straight pitches on a strikeout to him last time, and that is a strike to start it out here. Yeah, that one there for strike two. Looks like it's running away from Martini a little bit. And you see the shift is heavy on the right side. Just one Pittsburgh defender to the left side of second base with Martini at the plate. He lays off. If he, yeah, Andrew, if he, if he bunted down the third baseline, he could get a double. <laughs> I mean, I, I understand that's, you know, a two strikes that might be not the smartest idea, but I mean. Yeah, early in the count. <laughs> Definitely an opportunity. And instead, it's a strikeout for Andrade. Second time he has victimized Martini, And for Andrade, putting together a really solid start to the beginning of this outing here, already with four strikeouts. Now take another look. Andrade, uh, yeah, it looked like he was living outer half. That ball's outer half and tailing away from the left-handed hitting Martini. Carson with a good swing on it, but Andrade with a big out number two. Like you said, two strikeouts on the day, four total for him. And this lineup and two quick outs here in the bottom half of the third. So now the shift flips for Canizero. And just Cantwell on the right side of the infield. Singled his last time up. Oh, well, that was a little too deep for Kendro. Bouncer to third, Zuckerman with the stretch, gets him out over at first base. So three up, three down, go the Hokies at the top of the line. <laughs> Traveled a long way. Like you said, the difference in this ball game. And see how Brett Renfro attacks him here to lead off the fourth. He didn't waste any time there. Grounded the ball to Clay Grady, and the shortstop was able to make the play. Well, again, I like it. The right-hander has been aggressive. Seven-pitch inning in the last frame, third inning, only through seven to record three outs against Pittsburgh. And right there, the one bat that's beat you, he comes right after him again. Again, lets his defense work, 6-3 for Clay Grady across to Garrick Ebel. That's just eight pitches now, four outs between last inning here and to start this one, top half of the fourth. Well, the first baseman back to the plate, and Luke Cantwell. And it just misses a bit there. Renfro, less than 40 pitches as Cantwell grounded out to short his last time up. Turned into a bit of a pitcher's duel here in the first few innings. Hokies have not had an answer for Andrade yet. And it's turning into a bit of a bounce back start for Andrade who gave up 10 runs on 10 hits against Virginia where now the Hokies have only been able to hit off of him three times and have no runs to show for it. Oh, how big's that double play now? Back in the first end things, bases loaded for the Hokies bottom half and a huge 6-3 double play. Hokies now scoreless through the first three innings. And Renfro now here behind 3-0 against the left-handed hitting Luke Cantwell. Yeah, since that home run, Renfro has retired everyone he's seen. As Cantwell tries to break that, and he does. Well, the first walk of the day for the freshman pitcher. A walk there to Cantwell, but again, Renfro doing a good job to attack. Unlike Renfro there to struggle and give up that free pass, but with Melendez grounding out, Pittsburgh now against Renfro has four first pitch outs today, which is helping the pitch count for the right-hander for the home team. And just his 11th walk of the season is now C.J. Funk, who went down swinging in the first inning, fouls it off. And 
That's Groove down the plate for strike two. With Cantwell over at first, see if Pittsburgh tries to get creative with the base runners. I should just say one base runner, but still, and Cantwell get into scoring position here to try to elevate that one nothing lead. Two and two. Still Renfro running it up, 93-94 with the fastball. Similar to Andrade on the other side, we've seen a little more off speed. But here in a 2-2 battle with one aboard. Cranked into right. Micheletti, two outs. So that'll bring up Bishke, who flew out to center field. Lone hit for Pittsburgh, that home run from Jaden Melendez and the only blemish on Renfro's day so far. Oh, it's been a really clean ball game. Three hits for the Hokies, just that solo shot, the one hit for Pittsburgh. Good defense on both sides behind these two quality arms and Renfro and Andrade. Say it's a clean ball game. That, that's classic announcer jinx material there coming no, in. No. It's about to get bad news bears no. here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm no. kidding. <laughs> Too much confidence. I could, I could just hear that classical music that, that plays in the background <laughs> of that movie. <laughs> well, Renfro is going to get a visit from Ryan Fecto here. Just one walk in this inning in, in the game. Fecto wants to nip that in the bud here. So first of a three-game set. Going to be back here for you tomorrow. Series finale on a Saturday. Renfro, the freshman, getting another series opening start for the Hokies. Ready to work again with his battery mate, Henry Cook. Mishki thought about it. Instead, it's 3-0. Miss there. So that's the second four pitch walk we've seen in this inning alone. And that'll bring up Justin Fogel with a chance to make some noise here with two men aboard for Pittsburgh. Uh, very uncharacteristic for Brett Renfro. But a chance here with two outs, a pitch away. Hokie defense playing straight up. Christian Martin, sorry, Clay Grady shaded just enough to hold Cantwell close. That could be the second hit of the ball game, and it will be bouncing all the way to the wall. Pittsburgh is going to increase its lead. Cantwell scores. Here comes Bischke, and he slides in on a two-run double from Justin Fogel. So the Panthers making the freshman pitcher pay for those walks. And with two outs, an extra base knock for Justin Fogel. Well, and I always say the walks are going to hurt you. You take a look at the swing here. Great swing from Fogel. Sees it well, hard of the plate, drives it to the right center gap. No chance for Micheletti and Watson both converging on that. And good base running for Pittsburgh as well. Like you said, able to plate two, extend it to a 3-0 ball game. And still one and run, uh, one runner in scoring position here. A chance to put up a three spot and take a 4-0 lead here in the fourth. 
There's strike one for Jake Kendro. So the Panthers trying to spark something here with two outs. That's just a good piece of two two out timely hitting for Pittsburgh and Fogel. Even with the walks, Renfro had the two outs, chance to get out of it. Pittsburgh wins the battle. Fogel going to the wall in right center. So quickly down 0-2, Kendro popped up foul to Gehrig Ebel his last time up. Cook trying to frame up the fastball. The Panthers, a team that has struggled in the ACC, one and eight on the year in conference play. And now with some confidence here, he went down. So it's a strikeout for Renfro, but we know how good ACC ball is and Talked about it at the top of this broadcast. Pittsburgh coming in with a chance to make a statement. So far they have. Big hit there with two outs to get two more runs and go back to the home run in the first for Melendez. They got the 3-0 lead. Virginia Tech playing from behind, which is not a place they have found themselves in a lot this year. Yeah, Brett Renfro being down 3-0. That is the largest deficit that the freshman pitcher has pitched in this season. Ryan Andrade has maintained his composure. And Micheletti, that's called a strike anyway. So one ball and two strikes to the Hokies right fielder. Lays off of the fastball at 2-2. Uh, Virginia Tech just looking for base runners here. A lot of baseball left. But we've touched on it. The right-hander, Ryan Andrade, has drawn a tremendous job so far. Micheletti able to foul that one away. And Andrade's a guy who came in with a 10-3-8 a ERA and had really had a couple of rough bouts this season. And he's doing a solid job here in a pretty hostile environment. First game against a team that's on a considerable winning streak of seven in a row. And now with a little bit of offensive firepower behind him, a 3-0 lead is in a good spot here. But can he keep it up? Right back up the middle, Micheletti is on. So a good piece of two-strike hitting there for the Hokies right fielder. A good piece of two-strike hitting. Also a, a tremendous at-bat to start the bottom half of the fourth here. We talk about the success that Andrade has had against this lineup. Now the second time through, and Micheletti not only two-strike hit back up the middle, but able to work a full count, see some pitches, foul one away and then put that one in play to get the Hokies started here in the bottom half of the fourth. So here is Henry Cook. And that was the play of the game so far when Henry Cook hit into that double play. And for, for Andre, that last start against Virginia, a bit of an anomaly. Had a solid outing against North Carolina earlier this year and a series where the Panthers were just a couple of swings away from taking some victories away from the Tar Heels. But coming back off of a rough start, Andrade has been solid against Tech, but gave up that single. Start off things here in the bottom of the fourth. Can Virginia Tech start to wake up a little bit on the offensive side? Typically a pretty aggressive team, I would say here. You're seeing a little bit better approach. Not better, but more more patient approach for the Hokies. Now to a 2-1 count here for Cook. Taking a look at a few more pitches. We're seeing a little more off speed from Andrade. That's a fastball up that gets away from him. So after the ball turned around off the bat of Micheletti up the middle on a three count, Andrade finds himself 3-1. Still not an out recorded here in the bottom half of the fourth.
Sends that one high in the air. The wind drifting on it. It is out of here. Henry Cook gets the Hokies on the board with a shot to dead center, and it's 3-2. Well, and I've seen Henry Cook hit a lot of balls, a lot of balls harder than that. But you could just hear it between contact off the bat, straightaway center, the flag still going that direction. And it's hammer time in Blacksburg. Six home run of the year for the sophomore catcher. And it looked like he had just gotten under it, Andrew. That is a big, strong man <laughs> at the plate for the Hokies, hitting in a 3-1 count and a 3-0 deficit with the Panthers on top and Henry Cook just brought the Hokies within one. Check swing for Ben Watson and he went around says third base umpire Jose Ravula. So now the energy back for Virginia Tech in the dugout. Once again sky high here comes Graw. One away. That ball right there is not an easy play. You can see Graw loses his hat as he's moving to his left for that ball and still in some sun. Elevated off the bat of Watson. Really good job by the left fielder there to pick up his pitcher and record that first out with the high fly after Henry Crook's able to go big fly straight away center. Now when big fly just got it back that it went 4.07. And over the wall, Popa thought he had a beat on it right at dead center. Instead, it sneaks over. Here's Gary Giebel, who poked one down the right field line his last time up. So the Hokies' deepest stretch before they were able to put a run on the board this entire season was against JMU in the fifth inning. Hokies were threaten, threatening with that here today offensively, but Henry Cooks is not so fast. Able to get that ball up in the air and deep enough to cut the lead to one. That was a game that the Dukes needed to walk it off against Virginia Tech up in Harrisonburg. Now all of a sudden Virginia Tech back into this one just down one run. That was the fifth hit of the afternoon for the Hokies. A full count. Good pitch there for Andrade, but again, another full count. Big pitch to Ebel. Bouncer, third base, Zuckerman. Here's for the second out. So David McCann is up for the Hokies, the DH. It's one of those four strikeouts for Ryan Andrade. See if he can do it again here. Keep Tech off of the base pass with two outs. And McCann himself went big fly against Marshall on Tuesday. That ball was hit really well over the rock and protein sign out there in right <laughs> center. <laughs> A big part of this team uh, team's identity, the Hammer and Hokies. A lot of people you know, around this program very excited about the potential that this could be the another year like 2022 where it seemed like there were balls were escaping the park left and right. Yeah, Hokies, again, done a good job here in this inning. Trailing, trailing three, not a spot they've found themselves in a lot this season, but Micheletti with a great at bat and able to get on. And then Cook comes back with him aboard, home run. And here McCann is 3-1. Another hitter's count opportunity for the left-handed hitting DH to find a way aboard, extend this inning, and give Clay Grady a, an opportunity here in the nine spot. Now full count. So that was the 59th home run 
for Virginia Tech that makes it 3-2. Could the 60th be here to tie it up? McCann stays with a full count. Well, you see Andre kind of laboring for the first time. He's been so good. Put up three zeros through the first three innings. But here, a lot of pitches, several full counts in this frame. Sharp grounder. Cantwell is there. But a couple of runs score on two hits. One of them. You tech to at least even up on the inning, get two themselves, and they've got a great ball game heading to the fifth. Turner Graw takes a strike from Renfro. Still under 60 pitches. As we go to the top of the fifth, it'll be Graw, Zuckerman, and Popa. So pit 11 and 11, one and eight in the ACC. Just the lone win against Boston College. Taking on some pretty tough teams here in the ACC. Virginia, North Carolina, a couple of them to name so far. Big cut there from Graw. Uh, it's a long season, too. We've talked about Virginia Tech and their success. You just touched on Pitt and the struggles, but they like where they are in this game one against Virginia Tech, who's been so good. You mentioned one and eight, Hokies at eight and one. A Pittsburgh battling here in this first one. Coach Mike Bell can find a way to sneak a win or two, win a series here. A lot of ACC baseball left ahead, and that's what makes it so fun. Graw triggers one to center, and it's right at Watson for the Hokies. When you talk to Mike Bell, it's really not a, a chance or, or so much of can they steal a win away. He's saying, you know, we have the potential to do a lot here, but we have, can we execute it? And you talked a lot about that North Carolina series where they're playing a Tar Heels team and just a, a few plays just didn't go the exact way that it could have. And it, it ended up being a sweep for the Tar Heels. And they started out on the right foot here today with that home run from Melendez and a couple more runs off of the double from Justin Fogel. Ryan Zuckerman, a freshman trying to avenge his strikeout swinging from the third inning. And he's quickly down 0-2. Uh, Zuckerman coming in nine spot, like you said, the true freshman hitting 235 entering this ball game, and Renfro trying to come up with another quick out, going right after the right-handed hitter. And here's the 0-2. And for Renfro, that was just three pitches. Fifth strikeout for the freshman on the mound. Take a look at that 60th pitch. That's just perfect outer half. Henry Cook doesn't even have to frame a whole lot there. Zuckerman frozen on the 0-2 pitch, and Renfro wins the battle. Fifth stri strikeout on the day. Comes the veteran Popa. Senior so far, 0 for 2 today. Remember, he only hit 191 and 89 at-bats last year. Comes into this game leading the team in average. Make it one and one. And add on to this lead, 3-2. Oh, he's getting a few back off of the home run from Cook. Well, wow, baseball is such a game of momentum. You talk about getting the two back. All Pittsburgh through top four. Take a look at Popa and his numbers there. Better and better and better. Up to 337 here with the 29 hits. But on the momentum, you see Renfro there wanting that pitch instead of 2-2 falls behind 3-1. That first year, Going all the way back to 2021, the flat zero. And now the, the leader on this team. And then a batter's count against the freshman. Counted a short. 
Grady plays it well. Three up, three down goes Pittsburgh in the top of the fifth. Fifth, and right-hander's been able to keep the Hokies at bay. Just five hits in the game for the Hokies. Obviously, Henry Cook's the biggest in the last half for the two-run home run. Well, five innings is his longest outing of the year, so trying to get to that point here. Clay Grady taking a first pitch strike. It'll be Grady Martin and Carson Martini. Martin, the only one of the three to have a hit here today. He had that leadoff double back in the first inning. Nobody throwing in the Pittsburgh bullpen, but certainly the most activity we've seen. Nobody even down there through the first several frames, and now a couple bodies moving about. Fought off on the right side, but Bischke right there. So back to the top of the lineup with Christian Martin. Yeah, and a huge first out for Andrade. Continue to talk about his performance. Hokies now a third time through the lineup. and we'll see what adjustments Andrade makes on his side and working maybe backwards a bit, some off-speed stuff, not pounding the fastball. And then for Virginia Tech, what can they do to change their approach? And yeah, It looked like Zuckerman just lost it. Yeah, that side of the field is going to be tough here for just a bit longer. With the 4 o'clock start time, got some shadows, still some sunshine. That ball lifted off the bat of Martin, and like you said, Ryan Zuckerman over there just overrunning it to the third base side, just in line with Virginia Tech's dugout. Big cut for Martin on off speed there. Well, nobody on 0-2. Andre, as we started off the inning, make a note that he does not throw a lot of balls. Sends it out to left field. Long sprint for Graw. Makes the catch with no hat. So with two outs, here comes Carson Martini. We started off the game highlighting Martini how well he's been able to hit for the Hokies. 13 home runs on the year. So far today, they've been quick strikeouts. Andre has gone right after him. And once again, for the lefty Martini, the shift is on. And you can see Melendez there where Martini went down in his second time at the plate. Was away, away, away. Melendez, outer half, almost in the right-handed batter's box, going right back to that spot here again. Pops it up. That's in fair territory. Shortstop able to camp out under it in Kendro, and that is it for the fifth inning. Three up, three down go the Hokies. We're locked into a good one here, the fourth. That two-run bomb from Henry Cook made it 3-2, but that solo shot from Jaden Melendez, a big difference as he ducks at the first pitch from Brett Renfro. Top of the six, Bailey Engel, Andrew Wells, glad to have you along for the ride here. We'll be back here tomorrow as well. Who will be going for the series win tomorrow? Will it be Pittsburgh if they can hang on? Or can the Hokies muster up the bats and get over this one-run deficit? Once again, that is cranked, but well foul. I'd say Melendez is seeing the ball well today. <laughs> <laughs> that one's hitting, hit a long way. That was ripped, but still counts as though if he just hit a dribbler that rolled back to the backstop, a foul ball. 2-2. Two -two. And I love that right there. Melendez hits that one a mile. Has the home run back in the first that you just touched on. Brett Renfro dialed in, 2-1 count, goes fastball, says, hey, beat me again. Good quality pitch from the right-hander to even up 2-2. Two -two. Lifted that foul. Yeah. 
I'm going to have two balls and two strikes with a 2-3-4 up for the Panthers, trying to add on to this 3-2 lead. Popped him up. Eric Ebel able to make the play. That, that just feels like a big win for Brett Renfro. Big win, good pitch. You see Melendez frustrated, hit a couple balls a long way, and that at bat. Uh, Renfro just stays the course, saw a couple off speed, off speed there in that sequence and then comes back fastball. Jams Melendez off the inner part of the bat and easy put out for Ebel at first base. It's Cantwell who is 0 for 1 with a run scored. He was walked back in the fourth inning. Fourth inning has been the toughest one so far for Renfro. He walked Cantwell on four pitches. Walked Bischke on four pitches, two batters later, and then Justin Fogle tagged them both home on that two-run double. And now down 0-2, Luke Cantwell. Again, keep an eye on that pitch count. As we work here in the top half of the six, 73 pitches for Renfro. Still a lot of li life left in the arm for the right-hander. He's just going right after these hitters in a one-run deficit. Hit well to center field. Watson able to track it down. So now it's 74 pitches. I don't wonder for Renfro as... Last two were outs, but they're starting to be hit a little harder here in the sixth inning. How much longer does Renfro have in him? Uh, you see a toss down the left field corner for Virginia Tech. Again, see some movement in the right field corner for Pittsburgh, but nobody exactly getting hot. This is a Renfro-Andrade battle as we continue here with two outs in the sixth. They said it a few innings ago. It still remains the same. It's been a clean ball game so far. You're not supposed to say no, that. No, not supposed to. You I know. told me we're not supposed to say that. <laughs> hey, well listen, played. It's listen, been well we, played. We, we been have well been played. here. We have called a good amount of games together where it goes. <laughs> it can go south. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. But then at that point, why would we say compliment anybody on anything? Like, oh, good home run, whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Here's CJ mm -hmm. Funk. He's 0 for 2. Now three and one. And the battle here, if you're Funk, extend the inning, find a way on, give yourself a base runner. If you're Renfro, you want to get back in here, this 3-1 count, find a way to run it full and try to get your offense back in the dugout. Back in with a fastball there. So three balls, two strikes for C.J. Funk. Flew out to right field his last time up, nobody on. Renfro trying to toss six innings of work. And sharply on the ground, bobbled a bit. Martin stays with it, and it's a three up, three down. Top of the six for Brett Renfro and company. Hokies coming back down. He's Steelers, Manchester United fan, and I, you know, I root for Darth Vader to win in the Star Wars movie, so I, I'm not, not really a great person, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it starts out with a grounder from Canizero over to first. And it is a opening ground ball out here in the bottom of the six. Andrade still on the mound. This is now his longest inning or longest outing of the year. That was Micheletti. He singled and scored a run his last time up. Well, and we've talked about the well-played game, the clean game, whatever you might want to, <laughs> whatever you might want to call it. But give both of these arms credit. You can talk about a baseball series again. These teams are here to play again tomorrow and again on Saturday, in the finale. And both arms right now, not only keeping their clubs in this one, three-two ball game. Hokies obviously chasing one, 
Well, you just think about the bullpen and you think about the innings left tomorrow and on Saturday and what this does to both bullpens at the moment. We'll see who goes to their pen first. Finally, a real light toss down in the bullpen, a lefty for Pittsburgh. I think we've seen a little bit of light tossing for the Hokies on the other side. But Andrade here into the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, career long in innings pitch at five and a third. I want to bounce back for Andre, the arm from Rhode Island. And on the ground, shortstop is there. Kendro able to stay with it. So Cook just so strong. Plenty of wind right now. Flags have been straight out all day since first pitch. Definitely a hitter's park. One ball, one strike for Cook. Andrade hanging on here, trying to go six innings of work. And one and two. Wind still blowing out. Did Cook go around? He did. Masterful inning for Ryan Andrade, and he is fired up, as he should be. 3-2 Panthers stennings this year against Notre Dame. Just 80 pitches. I guess I shouldn't say just 80 pitches. That's a good amount for the freshman arm. Well, he's done a solid job today. Five strikeouts for Renfro. Just two hits so far. Tyler Bischke takes that one, one and one. Yeah, we enter the final three frames here. Obviously, every out important for both clubs. Renfro trying to push through a seventh inning for the Hokies. Clay Grady tosses to first. Does a good job there to get Bischke to roll over. Easy play for Grady in the six hole. So Justin Fogel, this is why it was 3-0. Fogel, after a couple of four-pitch walks from Renfro, bounces the ball to the right center field wall and scores Cantwell and Bischke. Well, it looks like we might have potentially a change soon here. As Fogel steps in for Shoemaker's first pitch. Well, Shoemaker, a part of a Penn team that went to a regional final last year. He appeared in 11 games for the Quakers and recorded a 4-5-0 ERA across 24 innings. And that could be a tough play. Slow roller for Martin. Underhands, and Shoemaker gets his heels on the bag. So Fogel is retired 4-1. How about that pitcher going over there, doing his part, gets the <laughs> toss from Martin at second base. Great play by Shoemaker. Like you said, kind of a no man's land. Martin comes to play it, but Ebel breaks that way first, and Shoemaker really a good job to recover as he's fallen the other way on the mound, and a big put out for out number two. Yeah, Christian Martin, for him, it has no room for error there in getting that ball out of the glove. That was a quick toss. And maybe that's why he's a Division I second baseman. <laughs> Jake Kendro is 0 for 2. This could be another tough play. Here comes Martini, a quick toss. And Ebel is taken off of the bag on the stretch. And with Ebel's body language of not getting up and immediately arguing it, it doesn't necessarily look like the Hokies might challenge this one. I think Ebel and Martin there on the right side talking, and his hand motion suggests that, no, I got pulled just enough. Yeah, he's off the bag there. 
Good effort there from the first baseman. Not enough to hang on for the third out. And that is counted as a hit on the scoreboard. So Shoemaker, the lefty, fires back in with a fastball against Graw. Who sent a couple of balls to the outfield so far today. 0 for 2. Runner going. Henry Cook down to second. He's out. Kendro taken out at second. He played at Virginia Tech his freshman season before transferring to Tallahassee Community College and then on to Pittsburgh. During his one season at Virginia Tech, he was able to play with his older brother in 2022 grad, Graham. Graham was a standout player for the Hokies and is now part of the Baltimore Orioles organization. Although Graham is not in attendance here today, there's no doubt this is a special game for the Fireved family. Bailey. Yeah, thanks, Ken Kendall. Ethan Fireved, the Virginia Beach native, coming on for Ryan Andrade, who is in line for the win at the moment. Watson, check swing, that ball was dropped, and now he is safe at first base. And for a rowdy Virginia Tech dugout, that is a big gift. Well, it's so disappointing if your fire vet just heard the great story. Lefty doing a good job here against Watson, gets him on three pitches. Watson, not really a chance on that swing, but unfortunately, Melendez doesn't pick it up cleanly, steps out in front of the bag, does everything right, but doesn't make a good throw to first base, and Luke Cantwell unable to come up with it. So Fireved, who started out his college career trying to make a big statement here in Blacksburg as that's lifted to left. Graw on the run and makes the catch at the warning track. Not enough to give Gary Gable a home run and it will keep Watson over at first. Well, Firevet with four strikes. So far, that one there inside on Ebel. Ebel tries to turn on it. You see his numbers on the year, eighth appearance, two and one record. 21 and a third innings of work. 25 strikeouts, just six walks. So I think you can see right there with the numbers why Pittsburgh and Mike Bell has turned to Firevet here after a tremendous start from Ryan Andrade. And Firevet with some spin on that one that went a bit inside. 1 0 on David McCann. McCann grounded out to first his last time up. He struck out his first time. And a breaking ball just misses. So the Hokies with some energy here off of the error for the Panthers. A ball sent to the warning track from Garrick Ebel. Grounder into right base hit. Watson stays at second. And there are two Hokies aboard. Well, Firevet, the lefty, coming in throwing strikes, but good job there by McCann. Doesn't try to do too much, just finds a hole in the infield, pushes that one to right field. Hokies now with two aboard, less than two outs, and Clay Grady here in the bottom spot. Try to find a way to load him up, make it interesting, give the top half of this lineup a chance to do some damage here in the bottom half of the seventh. Grounded out to second, his last time up. A lot of breaking pitches we're seeing so far from Fireven. See if the Hokies can be patient at the plate here, but before that, we're going to see Mike Bell. And the Panthers do have a righty warming up in the pen. Do they go to a sophomore from Suffolk? Taking on the lefty from Virginia Beach. Two men aboard, tying run in scoring position. That's ball one. We've got defense straight up here for Pittsburgh. Popa straight away center. Everybody in the infield holding down their positions. 
Ball on the outer half, Grady's best chance, 3-4 hole. You got Bishke holding. Instead, Fireved misses again, falling behind 2-0. Watson on at second. He was there on an error after a drop third strike. McCann singled. He's at first. Ripped off the glove of Zuckerman. Tying run will come in to score 3-3. Three, three. Clay Grady gets the pointer finger pointed at him from the man in charge there in the dugout and chef and Hokie's in business here like you said tying run and just a good solid swing on it turns on it left side Zuckerman unable to pick it up cleanly you've got Watson coming around to score easily momentum on the home team side here first and second still less than two outs and a little bit of energy from the crowd so now it's a no decision for the starter and Ryan Andrade, and that is going to be it for Ethan Fireved. So even though there was a lefty-lefty matchup ready to go, that is going to be another trip to the bullpen for Pittsburgh with half of the seventh. Grooves it right down the plate to Christian Martin, who's one for three. Blew out to left his last time up to make Graw work for it. With the sun in his eyes. Now as McCann at second and Clay Grady with an RBI at first. Another one that Graw will find. Steps up. Now there are two outs. So... A lot of transfers on this Panthers roster. Here is one of the notable ones on the mound in Phil Fox, the Gardner-Webb transfer from the school down in Boiling Springs. Justin Fogel today making some noise, a Division Three transfer, drove in two runs to make it 3-0. Now it's 3-3. Three, three. Here's Carson Martini, who is due, takes a big cut there. He's 0 for 3, popped up to the shortstop his last time up. Uh, keep in mind, we talk about this pitching. Fox on the mound now following Fireved, but before that, Andre, let's not forget, he went nine consecutive. Carson Martini pounds it down the line. Virginia Tech is going to take the lead. McCann is in, Martini dives, there goes the ball, and another run scores, and Martini trots the third on a Little League triple. And that's the competitive base running. Super aggressive for Virginia Tech. Martini with the hit he's been looking for all day, able to turn on one and drive it down the line, take a look at the swing, squares it up. And he's not planning to stop at first. As the relay comes in, you see Funk goes to Bishke. Can't get it to Kendro. It's short. Rolls into left. And another 90 for Martini there to get into third base. Tech dugout checking on Martini. I'm not sure what that would be. But nonetheless, Martini into third. Two big runs in on that play. And Virginia Tech with their first lead, 5-3. Chris Canizero up. Limbo's out of the way of that one. And all of these runs will be attributed to Firebed, but all unearned. Foul away. I'm trying to make it potentially 6-3 from Canizero here, who is one for three. Down the left field line, and it is foul. Virginia Tech starting to tag a few here. 109 miles per hour off of the bat. <laughs> the 
Pittsburgh just trying to limp out of this seventh inning. Melendez keeps it in front to keep Martini over there at third, make it two and two. That's a really good play by the catcher. As you know, Bailey, that's a very important run at third base. Pittsburgh not out of this game, six outs to work with. Top eight, top nine, obviously momentum not in their favor here in the bottom half of the seventh, but Martini's a huge run in this ball game. Fox trying to keep it at two. Full count. Payoff coming up with two outs and a runner at third. Got a piece of it, snagged by Melendez. It's a big strikeout for Fox, but the damage done there. Oh, just a tough half inning for Pittsburgh. Like you mentioned there, you see Josh Spiegel coming in, trying to get Pittsburgh going again here in the eighth as the lefty shoemaker remains in relief of Brett Renfro. Yeah, the tale of this game today, the, the starters for both teams putting together really solid outings, and unfortunately for Andre, the bullpen kind of falling off in that seventh inning, couldn't keep the win together potentially for Andre. And the shoemaker's down 3-0. Renfro, the freshman, all smiles in the dugout. As the grad transfer on the mound gets back into the zone. Renfro with a, a solid day. Five strikeouts on two walks, just two hits. They get a full count. Yeah, good fastball outer half there from Shoemaker. 91 on the gun, 3-2, big pitch coming here. Spiegel trying to find a way. Shoemaker looking for the first out. Rounder to short. Grady, slight stretch for Ebel, but he kept his foot on the bag. Back to the bottom of the lineup here with Ryan Zuckerman. Trying to get on for the first time today. He struck out twice against Renfro. Strike one. Hokies have won seven in a row. Trying to keep that win streak going here in the first game of this ACC series. And Shoemaker is grooving that fastball. Well, the goal here is keep base runners off the base paths. Obviously brings the tying run to the plate. Shoemaker proving his objective here. Go right after these hitters. Ahead 5-3. Way ahead in the count here, 0-2. Another fastball from the lefty. Well, there have been just three hits for Pittsburgh. One of them surrendered by Shoemaker in the top of the seventh on a single from Jake Kendro. He was thrown out at second. Cut and a miss. First strikeout for the lefty Shoemaker. And a little bit of reaction from the left-hander as well. You see that quality pitch outer half. Says, hey, I like it. Two outs here for the Hokies, top of the eighth. Popa trying to find a way to get aboard, extend the inning, bring the tying run to the plate. Momentum all on Virginia Tech's side at the moment as Shoemaker delivers another quality fastball outer half. How about this, Andrew? Popa has a 25 game on base streak. In jeopardy here, 0 for 3 today. 
Could this be it? Martin charges. Three up, three down in the eighth go the Panthers. 5-3 Virginia Tech trying to add on some final insurance. He's done a great job of keeping his team in this. Like you said, bullpen struggles a little bit. Hokies take advantage of some mistakes on the field for Pittsburgh. And now it's up to Matt Porter to put up a zero and give the Panthers one more chance in the ninth. Well, the shift is on for Micheletti. One for two today. He was hit by a pitch back in the first inning. Scored a run in the fourth. It'll be Micheletti, Cook, and Watson. And once again, for Micheletti, has the gigantic shift on him, kind of like what we saw when Carson Demartini is at the plate. Chris Baker out in left field for Graw. Breaking pitch, got him. A solid pitch there. Micheletti not agreeing with the call from Craig Barron. Yeah, it gets Micheletti looking. What I saw in real time looked like a pretty good pitch. Ball's just got a lot of break on it. Micheletti's seeing that on the outer half, but Porter starts that. Inside part of the plate, runs all the way across. Good job by Melendez to frame it up, and a big first out for Pitt. Henry Cook, and a ball off of the batter's eye back in the fourth inning. A lot of power from the Hokies catcher. Fastball's inside. So 3-0. and oh. Or 2-0, and oh, excuse me. Uh, Porter wanted that called. Instead, it's now 3-0. and oh. Took a cut on a 3-0. Yeah, surprised to see that 3-0 swinging. Be interesting to see what happens here in the bottom of the eighth. Does Shoemaker go another inning for Virginia Tech? And that got a piece of Henry Cook. And that ball went a long way off of his body. Scary moment for the Hokies and Cook. He looks like he's moving okay, but first few steps were pretty slow. See if they take a look at him. Coach Chef out of the dugout. Catch him on a front, a front leg. Oh, Cook is okay over at first. It's a Ben Watson who started off that rally, struck out, but on a drop third strike call is an error by Melendez, the catcher on the throw. Got him safe at first base. Fouls it off, the end of the bat. Hokies with a 5-3 lead. Maybe not a game where you see the fireworks 
that Virginia Tech has put together in so many games this year with huge innings of five runs or more, as this one's not over yet. But so the Hokies getting that momentum turned over on their side in the bottom of the seventh inning, scored three runs. We're down 3-2 going into that, now up 5-3. Pickoff attempt, and Henry Cook gathers himself back to the bag. I think that speaks to the quality of baseball we've seen today. Well pitched both ways, and you made fun of me for my clean baseball <laughs> comment, but I'll note that uh, things didn't go well for Pittsburgh when it was no longer clean. Two no. errors, yielded a few runs for the Hokies, and gave Virginia Tech their first lead in the seventh, which they're, which they're trying to hold on to here with one out bottom half of the eighth. Check swing, it's called a strike anyway. That is the second backwards K of this inning. So Porter has two gone. Yeah, both lefty-lefty matchups, both on the outer half, and looks like a pretty good pitch. You could tell that Ben Watson wanted to commit, tries to hold up, like you said, called a strike anyway. Good job by Porter here. Pitch away from getting out of this. Pittsburgh, one more shot in the ninth. Look at that breaking ball. Yeah, hung up there, a bit too inside on Garrick Ebel, who flew out to the left field warning track. Very deliberate move to first there from Porter. Outside. So if Pitt can retire Gary Giebel here, they'll have a pretty interesting part of the lineup up in the top of the ninth. It'll be Jaden Melendez, Luke Cantwell, and C.J. Funk. Melendez... Hit that home run in the first inning. And it was a solid effort by Renfro to retire him because Melendez had cranked a couple of foul balls to the planet Saturn early in that at bat. <laughs> Three and one. There's Melendez now. Working as the backstop with Porter. Full count. Evil after that last at bat. You see there on a 3-1 cut was looking 7-3. See a little bit of a laugh there from Garrick Evil. Payoff pitch coming. Strike three called. So Henry Cook hit by a pitch, but Porter strikes out the side. So for Jaden Melendez, trying to spark a comeback here. And the catcher takes one outside. Last time here when this series was in Blacksburg, Pittsburgh actually won the series opener. Hokies ended up winning the final two games of that series. That's a huge at bat, too. Take a look at Sam Tackett moved into right field in place of Micheletti. But a huge at bat here. Well, Melendez trying to find a way on. Chopper. One out. Great play there for Demartini. We saw one earlier pulled Evil off the bag. You could tell there wanted to make a good clean throw. First out in the ninth and. Good play, 5-3 put out. Ebel at first, Hokies two outs away. So Virginia Tech two outs away from its eighth victory in a row. Luke Cantwell, 0 for 2. He scored a run today off of being walked. 
And the first baseman takes ball one. So Shoemaker right now in line for the win for the Hokies. Fastball well inside on the lefty. There's a strike. Shoemaker's fastballs looked really good. Renfro from the right side goes Shoemaker left side. And for Henry Cook, looked like he took that one right close to the groin there. Seems to be okay. Taking a couple of deep breaths. I remember got hit in his last at bat as well. Takes another shot here off the bat. Oof. Mm, see Campbell with the check swing, and that doesn't feel good. Oh, Cook's a trooper. Going right back in, 2-2. Two -two. Pitch coming up from Shoemaker. Two balls and two strikes. Taking casualties off these foul balls. Cantwell right off of his ankle there, it looked like. Momentum has flipped over to Virginia Tech since that seventh inning, but still in bloop and a blast territory for the Panthers to tie this up here in the top of the ninth inning. Yeah, goal right now, get one on. Get the tying run to the plate. Another foul ball. Good fight here from Cantwell in the three spot. Lefty lefty matchup. We've seen good fastballs from Shoemaker, but Cantwell doing a really good job to stay in this at bat, like you said. Tying run. On deck, Cantwell finds a way with less than two outs. Pittsburgh with a chance. Did he go? He did not. Virginia Tech wanted that strike three call anyway. I don't think it was a strike. I also don't think he went. Good call all the way around. Big pitch coming here, 3-2. And that definitely is ball four. And Cantwell is fired up. And ends up being a long plate appearance. I see Pittsburgh getting a warning here. No more talking. Like you said, Cantwell extremely fired up after a walk. Mike Bell wants an explanation. A uh, tense part of the game. Now the tying runs at the plate. And C.J. Funk. He's pretty fired up there for base on balls. <laughs> Henry Cook going to visit here. You wonder what might be behind that left field wall. One runner aboard, tying run now at the plate. Shoemaker's done a tremendous job, and looks like Brady Kurtner moving towards the field from the left field corner. So will it be Kurtner, or will Shoemaker get another Couple of pitches here against C.J. Funk. So what a ball game we've had here in Blacksburg. Eight hits for the Hokies, three for the Panthers, but like we saw in that fourth inning, the walks were really detrimental for Pittsburgh. There were two walks that Renfro surrendered, and they ended up being runs off of the bat of Justin Fogel. Will the walks potentially 
penalize Virginia Tech again. Right back into the zone there for David Shoemaker. Yeah, interesting move there. Kurtner came all the way to the gate to enter. He's now returned to the other side of the left field wall. Coach Chef with a little bit of movement. But it's Shoemaker's ball game right now. One and one. And then Kurtner completely disappears <laughs> into the lab. <laughs> Fouled away, one and two. That's some tense pitches coming up. Well, you got to appreciate Shoemaker's approach here after the walk. A little bit of energy for Cantwell and the Panthers. And that's it. Now it's the move with wow. two strikes. And a good ball game so far. Panthers trying to send this to the Hokies' bottom half of the ninth inning. Virginia Tech just two outs away from its eighth victory in a row. Ground ball, Martin ranges, second out. Well, could have almost expected the curveball, maybe arguably Kurtner's best pitch. You see it there and really nothing for Funk to do with it, but Roll over to the right side, 4-3. Now the run at second base really irrelevant. Kurtner going to go to work here with Bischke coming to the plate. And Hokies looking to wrap up game one. Tyler Bischke still represents the potential tying run. There's a strike off speed from Brady Kurtner. It's a really, really good curveball from Kurtner. Not wasting any time. No balls, two strikes. Breaking the action here. Trying to at least alleviate some of this momentum that Kurtner has gained for himself. Bischke talking it over with Brandon Romans at third base. Uh, we've seen three curveballs, three breaking pitches from Kurtner out of the pen. Induced ground ball for Funk, two here to Bischke. I think fastball here. That stays with it. So buries that in the turf. He's got Cantwell over at second base. In the air to center field, Watson finds the ball, and Virginia Tech has won eight games in a row. 